is the story about the power of science film, a story told by researchers and activists from the Swiss Research for Development program. They joined forces to write the script, to shoot the scenes and to edit the material into the research documentary Inequality and Conflict Beyond Us and Them. We will now take you behind the scenes to share what we learned and how we changed. We started with numerous perspectives from 11 countries, different disciplines and research methods. We asked ourselves, would it be possible to synthesize a common storyline? A script started to emerge, connecting different dimensions of inequality and conflict. The storyline was far from perfect, but it was good enough to hit the road with the camera in a team of researchers, filmmakers and protagonists. Today, we share our inspirations from this synthesis process. Creo que el documental fue como un, un esfuerzo por integrar las distintas, las distintas piezas que estábamos en aquel momento investigando, equipos de investigación que no, nos, que no nos conocíamos para poder comunicar un resultado compartido. Entonces el documental, viéndolo, digamos, un año después, no es exactamente el resultado de las, de las, de las investigaciones, sino que es la sumatoria digamos, de experiencias, eh, perspectivas y construcción colectiva, tanto de equipos de investigación como de actores políticos y sociales en los diferentes países. Por ejemplo, el papel de las mujeres, ¿verdad? algo que, puede, que no se había buscado eh, enfáticamente, digamos, individualmente en cada una de las investigaciones, resultó ser el, el factor común. Y ese, ese factor común nos, nos evidenció, digamos, a, a mujeres en distintas partes del mundo que no son víctimas pasivas, sino frente a las desigualdades, frente a la violencia, eh, asumen, digamos, un papel de liderazgo y proactivo ¿verdad? En, la, en la transformación de sus propias sociedades. Digamos, entre, entre el público guatemalteco, el interés por, por conocer esas, esas historias de eh, mujeres que participaron como combatientes ellas mismas en situaciones de guerra. Yo considero que el documental lo que, lo que posibilita, digamos, es darle rostro también a los sujetos y sujetas que, que muchas veces en los textos no se logra alcanzar, digamos, esa perspectiva como más personal, más íntima de los personajes y los actores eh, dentro de una investigación, sobre todo en ciencias sociales, eh, en donde el texto suele ser, digamos, hasta cierto punto muy frío, pero la perspectiva del, del documental, de la participación de las mujeres, poderle dar rostro a esas mujeres, poder visibilizar a esos sujetos que en países como, como Guatemala... Key informants from the research projects agreed to become protagonists in the film. By capturing their personal stories and views, we learned and could show firsthand what it means to live through inequality and conflict. Conflict experience is something that nobody would want to witness or would want to be in. So by sharing that video, it's something that people can learn and people can begin to take measures to start addressing some of their social issues to mitigate or to prevent prevailing conflicts in their various communities. To come to understand that women have the potential, they have the ability, they have all the capacity that they need to promote peace and security in their communities. This is what we are doing and this is something that the film has shown us that women can do it. They, they are seeing women up on their feet and also making changes in their communities. Reflecting back on this process, I thought, yes, it's one way of indeed, you know, illustrating how the personal is political. So it is political, of course, for Amina and for her communities because 
they have been affected directly by conflict and by violence. But it's also political for all researchers and practitioners and filmmakers on you know, how you decide to emphasize some voices, what are the choices that you are making, what are the concepts that you want to put forth, and how you allow yourself to collaborate across bridges and across silos, which are sometimes very uh, solidly anchored into different disciplines, for instance, research perspectives and so on. I really learned to push myself creatively, you know, to try to think about ways through which our uh, research findings, right, could be translated visually. And this is something that we tend not to do as researchers. Uh, and of course, the filmmaker was crucial in helping us doing this. It helped me realize that filmmaking is a lot about relinquishing control. You are able to bring to life the experiences of people affected by conflict. That's one thing that really matters a lot to me because often, for instance, when you teach or when you do research, there's something very, let's say, distant. Our visuals and spoken testimonies reveal a human dimension of inequality and conflict that is often hidden within abstract data. With our film, nuances of scientific evidence become more accessible. We also offered room for debating concepts. We confronted policymakers with audiovisual work in progress. Like that, we created new connections by bridging the worlds of science, policy and practice. It was really a fascinating process, I think, to screen this documentary to different audiences, including uh, the policymaking world, in the sense that it triggered a lot of questions, I would say, but a lot also of really healthy debates. With the documentary, I think the point is made much more clearly that conflict across the globe are really affecting populations in different but you know somehow similar ways as well and resources exist across communities it helps really making people connecting dots i think mm. more strongly on some issues that really are cross-cutting after seeing the documentary i got to understand that by sharing your story you begin to have another level of healing within you. That was exactly how I felt when we were shown the video last year. It became another level of healing for myself. Mm -hmm.